So you're filling out your AMCAS application right now and you need some advice. Well, you've come to the right place. I filled out my AMCAS application last year and got accepted into a couple schools. And I just want to share some tips and tricks that'll make your journey through filling out this dreadful application a lot easier. So let's get into it. So the first thing that we see here is the submission date, which is June 4th is when I submitted it. As you may know, you can usually start filling out your AMCAS application in the beginning of May, and then you could submit anytime starting at the end of May up until, you know, whenever. But the earlier you submit, the higher your chances of getting an interview are, well, technically. After you submit your application, your application actually gets processed by the AAMC, where someone will actually sit down and read your entire application. And that process, since there's so many people applying, can take four to six weeks. And the thing is, med schools can't see your application until they're verified. As you can see, my process date was 628, which was about a month after I actually submitted it. And I didn't get any secondary applications until a couple days after that. So that's tip number one, submit as soon as you possibly can to maximize your chances of getting an interview. So this means ideally, you know, the end of May, early June, at the very latest, early July. For myself, while I was technically planning on submitting on May 28th, which was the first day I could possibly submit it, literally the day before that, I had a personal crisis. I'll elaborate on this a little better later in the video, but basically I was able to make my application a lot stronger in that week it took me to actually submit it. So let's call that tip 1.5, submit as soon as you possibly can, but don't rush it. Taking a little bit of time to fix your application in a way that you know how is a lot more valuable than just getting it submitted just a few days earlier. All right, so next is biographical stuff. So this section I recommend filling out as soon as you possibly can just in the beginning of May because it's super easy to finish and it'll make you feel a little bit better about yourself seeing that check mark on the biographic information on your AMCAS application showing that it's done. All right, so then this is the disadvantaged information session. So you can check no or yes. If you check yes, it'll give you 1,325 characters characters to write about how you feel like you were disadvantaged, whether it be socially, economically, or educationally in any way, and you can elaborate that here. Um, my only advice here really is to try to end on a high note, just showing how you've overcome those struggles and disadvantages, just because they typically want to see that. All right, so before we talk about courses, I want to take a second to talk about transcripts. All right, the second that AMCAS opens their application in the beginning of May, the very first thing I recommend that you do is request your transcripts from your university. I've had friends that have had their application delayed like a month because they've had issues with their transcripts either on the university side or AMCAS side. So the earlier you get that taken care of, the more you minimize the likelihood of something like that happening. So yeah, that's tip number two, get your transcripts in early. All right, so with that out of the way, courses, you know, putting in all these courses made me want to pull my hair out, but you got to do what you got to do. So just a couple pointers from what I have here. So if you've taken any AP classes, those will go under your freshman um, status under your first semester. And all of those grades will be passes. So just it'll just say P it won't assign you an actual score. And another thing. Um, so I graduated a year early. And so if you see here, it goes straight from sophomore to senior. So if you do end up graduating a year early, they'll just get you to skip the junior year and you just go from sophomore straight to senior designation. My final pointer here is to ask someone that has a keen eye for this kind of stuff to look over this and compare it to your transcript. For example, I asked my dad to do it. He works in software and his job is literally to look for errors and mistakes. And when he reviewed how I inputted all my courses, he did catch a couple mistakes. Sometimes those mistakes can cause slowdowns in your application process. Processing. So if you catch all of them before that, it'll help you in the long run. All right. So next you have your GPA section. These are calculated after your application is processed and the, they will basically populate these tables for you. And here's your MCAT score that'll automatically populate as well. All right. So the next section is the big section. It is the work and activity section. And I have a lot of advice here. So this shows us tip number three, which is group similar activities. So all my honors and scholarships are all under the same group. If we scroll down a little bit, you'll see that all my publications are all in the same group as well. All that stuff is grouped together. It just saves a ton of space and your application reviewers will thank you for condensing your application a lot. So you can put 15 activities in this section. They're basically grouped 
from most recent to least recent, you have 750 characters to explain every activity, and then you get to pick three of those activities as your most meaningful. You get another 1,325 characters to write for those. You can pick from this list of categories to put each one of your activities under. In my first experience here, you see that I wrote about my master's of public health experience. I had no other place I could put in the application, so I just decided to put it in the work and activities, just talking about why I decided to get an MPH and the reasons why I'm excited for it. I want to take some time to talk about this next description. So this is when I volunteered at the vaccine clinic. And so while my duties weren't that great, you know, I just had to manage patients in the observation area after they received their shot. I made sure that in my explanation, I didn't just leave it at that. I go on to kind of explain how this experience affected me. Loki, I'm kind of proud of this description. You know, I say things like I would converse with patients for the entirety of their 15 minute observation. The vaccine clinic was the first beacon of hope after such a difficult year. Positivity in the building was contagious. Uh, met with stories of their struggles. And all these things demonstrate tip number four. And that is that your responsibilities are really only 10% of your description for this section. The majority of your description to demonstrate the impact that you made and the qualities that you displayed. One thing that I would caution you against that I kind of did here was I ended it with this as a physician, blah, blah, blah. Uh, while you can do it here and there in your activity section, I suggest that you don't mention that line in every single uh, activity because it's kind of given that you're going to do all these things as a physician. So it's kind of repetitive and, and not really necessary. So if I had to go back, I'd probably cut that part out. So for the sake of time, I'm not going to stop and explain every single one, but you're welcome to pause the video and read up on certain ones if you want, and be sure to leave questions in the comments if you have any. So in this description here, I told a story. Now, while telling stories are kind of hard in this section, because again, you only have 750 characters, when you can do it and demonstrate a point, it can really, really pay off. This description for me being an MCAT tutor and strategy video creator, I didn't just simply say that I tutored students and how many I tutored and the videos that I created. Instead, I told a story about A. So quick pause, who is this mysterious character A? Well, A is just a placeholder for someone. You can do that. You can just put a, a letter, honestly, to placehold someone's um, name. And, and that's typically done a lot. So if you have a story that you want to tell, be sure to do that in order to minimize the characters you use. And just make sure you never actually put their real name in the story. But I basically tell a story about this one tutoring experience I had with a student, you know, showing instead of telling the impact that I had, as well as qualities that I demonstrated through this experience. Beyond that, I put something memorable in my application, which leads to tip number five stories stick. When it comes to reviewing your application, reviewers will remember your activities and accomplishments by the stories you tell, not by the responsibilities that you list. All right, so now looking at one of my most meaningful activities, it was a podcast I started during COVID. Shameless plug, link in the description. And this project kind of had a special place in my heart and you can tell by reading my description about it. Um, but as you can see, there are two text boxes here, right? So there's the experience description and then the most meaningful experience remarks. So basically I used the first box to kind of explain my project descriptively. And then in the second box, I kind of told more stories about stuff more in detail and the different episodes I've had with particular people. All right, so being an EMT was another one of my most meaningful experiences. And I wanna show you here that you can actually select multiple date ranges. So I volunteered with EMS from November 2019 to March 2020. And then the station that I worked for no longer allowed volunteers for a while. And then I wasn't able to get back into it until January 2021. And so then I actually projected out my hours until May 2022. So again, I submitted this application in June of 2021, but I was able to put 2022 down for my date here. And so basically what that's meaning is that I was able to project out hours and you're allowed to do that. You can put down hours that you're planning on completing after you submit your application as well. All right, so here I talk about my study abroad experience. While it was a medically related experience, I didn't linger too long on that. I focused more on the cultural things I learned and how it increased my cultural awareness. And I feel like that's a lot more valuable because cultural awareness is super important in medicine. So I basically tell a story about how vitamin D deficiency was an issue among Muslim women uh, in Malaysia and Malaysia being you know, one of the biggest um, Muslim countries, this was an issue that the population faced. And that was because of um, the coverings that Muslim women typically wore. And yeah, that was a pretty opening experience and so I decided to write about it. All right, so the next thing I want to point out is how I wrote about research. So 
Research was another one of my most meaningful experiences. And like on the previous most meaningful, I used this first paragraph to talk mostly about the things that I did. And then in the second most meaningful remarks, I wrote more about a reflection piece, how it impacted me and that kind of thing. I did basic science research in the lab. And so that kind of research can get really technical really quickly. So I didn't go way too deep into the research because I didn't want to confuse the reviewer. I wasn't sure who would be reviewing the application. And so a lot of times you can save that kind of stuff for an interview or a second secondary essay where you can go more in depth with your particular research if they ask for it. All right, and finally my hobbies. So I wrote about videography because it's something that I really like to do. And I definitely recommend putting something down for your hobby because it just shows that you are someone that has something that you can enjoy outside of medicine. And so I know I didn't go way too in depth with each one of those. I'm planning to make a video where I go through my entire journey to medical school, where I'll explain how each one of these activities fit into that kind of framework. And I'm going to save that for that. So if that's something you'd be interested in, definitely consider subscribing. And the same thing with the personal statement, there's way too much to unpack here to fit in one video. So if this is something that you want more information on, then I could potentially make a follow up video where I just talk about the personal statement and use mine as an example. But yeah, this was the personal statement that I ended up completely rewriting the day before I thought I was going to submit. And that's why I ended up submitting a week later than I was planning to originally. All right. And so the next thing, letters of recommendation. So I had a committee letter from my university. And so make sure you go through the process and figure out how you get a committee letter from your university. Most medical schools recommend that you get a committee letter if you have the option. So definitely recommend looking into that. And finally, these are all the medical schools I applied to and I can make a follow up video explaining which ones I got into, which ones I didn't and how I made this list in the first place. So again, let me know if you want to see that. So the last thing I really want to say is that filling out this application can be a lot of work. It can be overwhelming at times. I mean, I've had so many moments where I'd look at what I've written and just think about how terrible it was. There were so many revisions that went into creating this final application that you see here. And there's so many people that helped me make it become this. So that's my final tip. Find those people that make this process easier. Whether it be professors, medical students, family, or friends that can review your applications or just be emotional support humans, every little bit helps. And with that, I wish you good luck on your application, future doctor. You got this.